Hello everyone, the Panda Photographer once again, and I am, am apologizing to the last live stream. The vo audio was not really punchy in my voice, and I really, really have to apologize for that. So if you don't mind, I'd like to have a redemption on part 4 of this Premiere Pro CC, how I add my YouTube content videos, and go through the process once again. and. Uh, this is part four. So if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe if you like any of my content on this channel And if you would like to hit that notification button to receive more Notifications when I upload a video, please do so and share the content as well But don't forget to support the channels down in the description below if you want to know more about this video, please read the descriptions. It tells you about the camera, the settings, and the lens, the Sigma 1835, and the feature product of this tutorial, uh, tutorial is the Zombie Nurture Variable Density Filter. Uh, I bought, purchased that with my own money, but I wanted to feature this fantastic and the uh, variable uh, density filter in this video because it's one of my favorite little gadgets especially when doing video outside or in bright uh, background con bright backgrounds but uh, it also helps to distinguish and uh, helps eliminate some of that over the, um, highlights in the background when filming so virtual, virtual filters Virtual Denty filters come in hand when doing video. So yes, they do come in handy. So if you guys are curious, the camera that I'm using in this process is the Sony Alpha A77 Mark II. It's a crop sensor to my sports and wildlife camera. Now I use it for video, and it does have a good codec. Uh, not the best codec, but it has a good codec. Um, and I'm shooting 1080p, 60 frames per second, and the codec is XVACS, which I'm using in 60 frames per second. So I'm going to be featuring Film Convert Pro 2.3.6, and I'm going to be adding a, a Lux on top of whatever Film Convert settings that I'm going to show you. And first of all, I want to say and emphasize two things: is that uh, when Film Convert, I actually selected the Sony A7S, it is close to its original. Uh, camera settings. Uh, I used the uh, ITU 709 uh, profile, so that profile is going to give me what I'm looking for when I actually want to color grade properly with the Sony camera. But uh, note that each of these animated uh, key toggles here, I actually locked them in in the beginning of the scene. So make sure when you do color grade. Or change any of the the, the settings in uh, in the clip that you must and I repeat you must uh, select the toggle animations and lock them in and once you're done at the end of that clip you can use the end key add or remove keyframes and that would fix whatever you settings that you have applied to that scene of b-roll or video clip so with that said guys uh, here is my pro here's my breakdown so uh, I'm going to show you a before so you guys have a better understanding of how I actually edit this uh, video. Now, if you haven't seen this video, it's about my gimbal ultimate setup for YouTube on the go content and Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and as a photographer and as an amateur videographer, I need to share my experiences with the world. And the world is like my family and like my door or my home I go to I open it up and you guys are waiting to see what I'm gonna publish but this is what this video was about really uh, showing how much effort I've went and put it into thinking about what kind of cables I need what kind of brackets I need what kind of light source I'm gonna use at nighttime and I do want to emphasize two things that I do want to make a correction uh, and which I did in that video in the descriptions it's a Neuro 160 LED light source and that's the light source that I am using for the setup so I just want to make that clear but let me show you what it looks like before all right this is what it looks like before before everything is processed everything's worked on but before we even get to the clip I also want to continue to say as a someone that wants to share my experience that I always organize my files so 
if you are organizing files make sure that you have files for your video clips for the animations or in text and for the audio if you're going to use audio in this case I use audio to uh, navigate over the video uh, and I use my iPhone 6s which I also use the Lavinier, the Omni Directional CQ uh, Lavinier microphone, which was ten bucks, by the way. Uh, I want to just let you guys know that you can buy it on Amazon. I will link all the gadgets and the links down in the descriptions below. But with that said, I do want to share the products and not endorse, not sponsor. No one sponsors this video. I'm doing this video out of consideration of trying to make a name for myself, but also to try to. Uh, share my experience how I add now as I said before that I'm a amateur filmmaker and no profession by any means but I do my best when I want to color grade and uh, to me this is like Lightroom as, as a photographer I gotta think about it in a Lightroom uh, point of view but I also have to like uh, do my best and work in how to work with Premiere Pro CC but here's the gyroscope and you can see like the blacks are uh, crushed pretty much and the whites are uh, pretty crushed to that at the same time but we're gonna go back into the settings here and I'm gonna show you everything that I have applied here now as I said the Sony E7S was the closest I exposed my exposure by uh, ha uh, you can say half a stop uh, and I as I said before the keyframes and the key toggles are important to lock in your settings uh, I went from 4500 Kelvin temperature to 5400 Kelvin temperature. Uh, I decided to uh, change how cool it was, uh, and I can add a little bit of coolness later on with a little bit of the colorway, which I'll show you in a little bit. But you can see that I also locked that in. Everything I have done is locked in. Now, I want you to take a very important notice at the settings here. If you look at the, the size, now I change it to super 35 because it is actually being cropped in a super super 35 mode so make sure you select the super 35 mode and what you do see is also the film color the the, the curves and the gray now you can see that i only use 70 percent of the film color and only 73 percent of the curves now when it comes down to grain like i said i am shooting in 1080p uh, 60 frames a second uh, so I bring down the, the, the grain a little bit here and also up the saturation by 50% from 100 to 150 now the color wheels here with the shadows midtones and highlights now I went on the cool side of my highlights but I went on the very warm side of my midtones and I went to the very uh, saturated like warm side uh, for my shadows and if I apply that particular setting give me one second now if I particularly uh, apply that setting uh, you can see how it suddenly just changed how everything looks it looks a little bit more pop looks a little more natural but I feel like the background with my depth of field is a little bit overblown so I am going to fix that with another Lux, but I also want to emphasize and show you my settings here so you guys have a good idea at how I go do my YouTube editing. And, and when you are going out to make sure that you are going to f film your YouTube editing, make sure that take your time, get a couple of shots of the same uh, uh, spot, and make sure you get a pan shot, left shot. So I choose the pan shot. I was handheld, I didn't use a tripod. Normally, I will use a tripod. But in this case, I didn't use a tripod. Uh, I should have used a tripod, but uh, in all these clips, I should have. But this is minimum shake. Now, if you want to do warp stabilizing to the footage, now it depends how much shake is in the footage. Now, I technically do not use 50% at all. A lot of people make that fail mistake at the beginning, but I normally add like 10%. If it has minimum shake, if it has a little very shake, I add five or ten percent of warp stabilizing to the footage so I just want to emphasize that but on the right hand side on the screen here you can see that I use a colored uh, another color uh, Lux profile now all my Lux files are organized in a folder so 606 Lux pack inside a Lux folder that is important 
everyone so make sure you do and uh, let me make sure that you guys are live so you guys can see okay so I'm gonna continue on and I actually selected the me the mechanic 75 Lux profile now I am going to show you how that looks now I'm gonna add that to the scene and oops let me choose this back Let's do, let's do 35 intensity. Let's do 0 0.5 sharpness. Let's do 35 on the vibrant. And let's do 105 in the saturation. Since I already did the saturation part, uh, but you can definitely see it here at I want to make sure that I didn't do anything stupid. Okay. So here we are. Now there we go. I was trying to figure out what, what happened. But uh, anyway, as I said, let's let's continue on to talk about this lock. So I use this locks and when you see me do not apply the locks, uh, it's disabled. You can see that little nice white warm uh, bluish kind of thing going on for this clip. But uh, if I add it just a little bit and I go down to 35% of the clip, so that's what I'm, my target is. I'm going to go 0 0.5 on the sharpness here. I'm going to go 35 on the vibrance. And I am going to do 105 at the saturation. Now I am in the process of adding some sharpness to the scene. Now I'm going to zoom in 50% right about this to here now I want you guys to pay attention to this scene I'm not sure if you can see this in the YouTube compression in 720p but I really want you guys to see how much sharpness I'm adding so in the percentile I am adding a hundred percent amount 120% amount of sharpness and my radius is about 1.2 now I'm not using any thresholds I'm not doing any commercials or anything like that but just take a closer look I'm not sure if you can see it due to compression on YouTube but you see that subtle difference now watch again watch carefully and I'm gonna switch right about now you see how the scene of the contrast areas got soft so what it does is the sharpness is actually trying to detect high, con high contrast pixels within the clip and sharpen that clip. So if I sharpen it again one more time, you can see it. And you see a big difference in the sharpness. Now, as I said before, I was handheld in this my camera the whole entire process and filming this, and I started filming at three o'clock. I was done. At 45 minutes later, about 3:45, I started editing. About 4 o'clock, I was done by uh, uh, five minutes to six. So, and then once I was done editing and and editing and then processing everything, I was able to upload this video by 7 p.m. So, gives you a good a, a good time frame how I worked on the clip and everything. Now, I did all my animations and all my text in Photoshop. So, if you have animations, please organize them and put them in folders so you have easy access when you export them. I mean, not export, but import them to Premiere on your projects. So, but also make sure that when you are doing your project on each clip, save the file or save the project each time and I, I sometimes this may happen Premiere does crash once in the blue moon so to be cautious please save it every like three to five minutes when you're doing uh, uh, when you're making any changes because it, it does help to not redo the changes over again in that process but as a pen photographer guys I really appreciate it that you tuned it in to this uh, live uh, Premiere Pro CC tutorial. This is part four. This is what I do on my YouTube content and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. But anyway, let's continue on to talk about more of what I'm doing here. So I use the color grain metric. I use my effects. So I go do each of the tabs. When it comes down to my audio, uh, I do 
add audio and I do put uh, effects like as you can see I sh did most of my over my audio I did most of my audio with this uh, iPhone 6s iPhone and what I did was basically to uh, added some noise reduction and added an EQ I'm sorry I'm getting like a lot of people do that I'm imagining some uh, EQ uh, noise compression uh, I added some uh, voice enhancer and a low-pass filter but anyway uh, I do want to share that and I want to sh show you also the colors here now on my driver score you can see from the same clip it's gotten much better and much improved uh, I can work a little bit with the driver score I gotta really learn how to like fix things in the driver scope and make sure that everything is able to be you know as perfect but you know as I grow on this channel it's important that you know trial and error criticism is part of uh, what gives you the flexibility and what gives you the strength to move on criticism is a good thing it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing and to me criticism isn't just forcing you to be better at what you do so keep that in mind but but with that said, uh, I do want to share and my experience with you guys with how I add everything and go through the process. Now, I am using uh, effects when adding my text or animations to fade them out and so forth. And that is optional. You can do that in After Effects. You can do that in Premiere. Premiere has a few, but in After Effects, you might want to consider doing it in After Effects. But with that said, everyone, so this has been a quick tutorial on how I add everything and how I process the files as I go along. And when I come down to my music choice, I just pick music and I turn down the volume on each one. So I, I normally go particularly by negative 30 to negative 30, negative 40, but it depends on the scene, depends on the voice, um, but it also depends on what I'm doing so if I want to don't have a voiceover I increase the volume so and what I do is I merely add them in here and the volume controls which is the audio so definitely would do it in audio uh, so you go into the audio track you can do everything in the audio make sure that you do everything accordingly as as, as you should and make sure that uh, always recheck your work and make sure that you don't do any mistakes and sometimes that happens and mistakes do happen in videos and no one's perfect but that's the way how to proceed with this so uh, my Lux package is not available but you can probably buy some Lux if you choose to buy them uh, I know they serve them in packs and what forth but uh, they are free Lux but uh, if you want some of the Lux that I use I have a ton of them but uh, maybe I post them in the links below so you guys can have an access way to download them from my Dropbox. But uh, I do want to emphasize the computer that I'm using. I am using a dual core CPU. This is about three years old. My original laptop is the same model but with a V, which is U2442 V. That one had a quad core that was stolen uh, about six months ago. And then I picked this one up and this had a quad core. It had a GPU so a 640 dual core but here's the thing I am using SSDs in this process SSD to me the read and writes is much faster I can get my work done much quicker if this also had a quad core so I'm pretty sure I can cut down my rendering and my exporting times by a few minutes I'm pretty sure but right now I have to deal with this laptop which is getting old it's about three years old it actually is three years old it's a three year old laptop I'm trying to upgrade trying to save money up if you guys want to help contribute to that hit the PayPal donation button down in the scriptures below it really helps me out to actually get what I need to make more content like this in an official state uh, I think a newer laptop with up-to-date specs would definitely have a different experience when it comes down to uh, editing and uh, viewing my files without any lag and that's what I get sometimes on this laptop is a lag issue so but on top of that it's also Windows 10 always want to update something change something in my system I can even update the video card drivers which is unfortunate but uh, 
And right now, I'm using all SSDs. I got an M SATA SSD and I got two regular SSDs. Now, I do use mechanical hard drives to store data on them, just data. I don't use them to run, I just store the data on them. I do, my parents do have a server data that we have. I log into that, and sometimes it takes me like three to five hours to process every one of those files to the server I lock into that server manually uh, I make sure that I use all security measures here I use uh, cyber ghost so no one knows the IP address of that but yeah I use other apps but that's a different video different topic for another discussion but I just want to emphasize that I use SSDs uh, mechanical hard drives are great but over time mechanical hard drives you're just gonna have to uh, realign the a hard drive and then defrag the hard drive every like 21 to 30 days if you want to keep the speeds and write read and write speeds up to par especially when programs are being used all the time and programs do scatter do that uh, setter and uh, and uh, cluster so you want all the, the, the files to be in one setter or close to each other in setters and files so it's, it's very important to have that but with that said, uh, yeah, so over here you can see everything that I exported in colors. So I do label them in colors based on so I know that the green is the footage. Uh, it actually, it's the, the audio in and the, and the, is that uh, uh, Quaqua Blue is my video footage files and my purples are just like uh, text and animation and stuff like that. So I do colorize them as I go and do that so you have an easier workflow so that's my just my pen now if you're going to add graphics to any of the footage you can't do that that's why i get to when it gets the graphic it turns into the purple so that's that's a good thing and for me for the audio it goes into the green and for editing it goes into should be able to go into like this section here but i need to reprogram the premiere to also do that for me on the Mac Elite. But now, when it comes down to music choice, I use non copyright material music all the time. You can download some, you can buy some, you can be a uh, subscribe to a uh, membership to get unlimited access to uh, music files if you choose to. It's based on options, but don't try to use a uh, cut. Uh, already copyrighted material use non copyrighted material so you can use it for your content so it's, with that said as a panda photographer I just want to emphasize and show you guys how I add with all the video clips and my editing process and film cover is a very good tool to use I recommend it I'm not sponsored by uh, film convert but I do recommend film convert if you are learning how to do color gradient and you want to use lux so with that said uh with that said uh basically that's the end of it and please do subscribe to the channel and please do hit the notification button it really helps me out there guys and support the links down in the scriptures below but if you find this very informative please do uh hit the uh hit the paypal button to help me out and with that said eat sleep photography videography and audio file and repeat and i will see you guys in the next video take care if there's anything that i have missed in this video please let me know down in the comments down below peace take care peace out